Today we will work on many of our favorite Scarlatti Sonata, the F minor. If you are not sure which fingers to use, you can download the sheet music for free in the description. So, let's try playing the first phrase with the right hand. I'm searching for nice legato with relatively soft and round sound. Listen to how the sound transmits from one note to another. You can do this by letting go of each key only after playing the next one. In order to produce this kind of sound, you need to have very flexible wrist. You want to avoid any kind of tension in this area since it will produce aggressive sound. Let's take a look at the left hand. What I want here is only to complement the right hand's melody. We need to make sure not to dominate the melody, rather play softer than the right hand. As I mentioned before, the way how we attack makes the whole difference. I want you to try imagine pulling the keys towards yourself instead of pressing them down. Let's go further with the right hand. The second phrase starts with a group of triplets, which is repeated several times. My direction is towards the beginning of the second triplet. I start softly and build up immediately and finish it softly. Basically, I'm kind of trying to create small waves. If you still have difficulty playing two against three, you can try practicing it very slowly. Afterwards, you could start speeding up gradually as you get comfortable with it. Let's come back to the left hand. We have quite similar texture to what the right hand plays in the beginning of the piece. I will just try to apply the same idea and imitate the right hand. This time perhaps a bit softer though, because you still don't want to dominate the right hand. Keep in mind that we want to finish this phrase very softly, in order to cool it down a little, as well as to start comfortably and very softly with the next phrase. Let's go further. In my taste, is the beginning of this section probably one of the softest places in the whole piece, so it requires very gentle touch with both hands. This dramatic build-up, which is relatively long, is the reason why I want to start as soft as I can. We have 6 bars. I really like to give quite a bit of tension here, so I would go for playing each bar stronger. There is a danger of overdoing it if you play strongly too soon, so you may end up playing too loud in the 6th bar. Therefore, try playing each bar just a little bit more.
perhaps do the last two bars a little bit more, which will kind of manipulate the build up so that it will sound way more effective. Let me demonstrate. <laughs> surprise feeling with this harmonic change. In the next section we have very familiar texture from earlier with both hands. That might already give you some comfort feeling when you try it. Let's stick to the same idea as before. Keep the 8 notes on the left hand without any break in between them. Next phrase is written very typically by Scarlatti. These three bars are repeated identically. Traditional idea is to play each of them differently. For example, you could start with the first phrase very soft and play stronger when it's repeated. first phrase more powerful and make a contrast by playing it lighter when it's repeated. I personally stick to the second option. Even so, I try to play quite melodic with the left hand in the first three bars. Pretty much open sound, with intention to make it sound like a solo. At this moment, I think we could afford dominating with the left hand a little, because it's not less melodic than the right hand here. When repeating it though, I neutralize both hands with a very minimal touch. Last bars are almost like a summary of everything I have talked about until now. We have melodic triplets on the right hand, accompanied by double quarter notes on the left hand, and the same motif is repeated three times. Let's try playing the triplets with direction. Now let's try playing the left hand with more specific action. Remember pulling the keys towards yourself. to make contrasts while repeating the same motif for three times. Option 1. We could play the first motif stronger, then repeat it softer, and then repeat it powerful again. Option 2. First motif softer, then repeat it stronger, and then repeat softer again. Option 3, which is the option I like to go for most of the times when I perform. First motif powerful, then repeat softer, then repeat even softer. As you heard, the last one I play slower as well, because this is the end of the first half and you want to calm down a little. In my experience, it's helpful to use the left pedal here, especially if you want to play the third motif as soft as possible, like I do. If you are playing on an acoustic piano, I definitely recommend trying that. It's not only going to help you to get very soft sound, it will help producing a very intimate color as well. First try reading the whole part very slowly, with separate hands. 
even from the very beginning, try implementing all the dynamics and differences with the touch. If you are not happy with it, you can change later, but I think you should always have some intention while playing, so it will get more naturally into your system and you will learn the piece sooner. Let's talk about the pedal. It is a personal choice if you want to use it or not, as well as the proportion if you decide to go for it. I will show my approach to the pedal, as well as mention a few points that everyone must consider regardless how they want to use it. In the first three bars I would use the right pedal and change it twice. In the fourth bar I would change it four times, obviously very much influenced by the left hand. In this way I make sure that each harmonic move has been heard clearly, without mixing with each other. However, in the next three bars, I would stop using the right pedal and add some left pedal. Feels a little dry, yet very intense. For the next three bars though, I don't want to continue with dry texture anymore. I would let go of the left pedal and add the right pedal instead. I like to change it four times each bar, which means on every quarter note. Scarlet is also not as have two parts, and we can call them part A and part B. With most cases, part A and part B are quite similar. Motifs, melodies and textures are very familiar. I want to encourage you to try to take all the steps I explained for part A and implement them on part B. Before I play it through, just want to add, try imagining some story about it. That will help you to play in storytelling way naturally. And you don't have to wait to master the piece before thinking about the story. So try it as soon as you can. In my case, the keyword of the story I imagined would probably be loneliness. For some people it could sound too melancholic. To me, this sonata has something very common with loneliness. Therefore, I do try to imagine producing kind of cold, pure, sad, but still very sophisticated sound. Who knows what comes out, but imagining it definitely gives something. Now I will play the whole sonata through. I'll try to implement everything I've talked about in my interpretation.
There will be a link in the description where you can see me playing this piece with stable footage and sheet music. Hope you have enjoyed it. Till the next one. Have fun.